guys, Morgan, aka MTG Valkyrie here. You might know me from my YouTube series, The Daily Draft, or my Drafting with Morgan series on GatheringMagic.com. Now you can see me on SeemsGoodMagic.com once a month. I I started out doing draft videos for SeemsGoodMagic.com, and I'm pretty sure you can't find them, so don't bother looking. <laughs> We're here doing a time spiral Swiss draft today and uh, I've really enjoyed the format so far. It's kind of weird and grindy but also pretty fun so I hope to share some of that with you. I will see you when the draft starts. Alright, so here we have a pack and it's kind of complicated so stick with me. Uh, first, there is the Time Shifted card. The Time Shifted card is a card that was originally printed in an older set that is the special bonus card. Ours happens to be a rare. It's a flying vampire with... Uh, that's a 4-3. And whenever a creature dealt damage by Soul Collector this turn dies, return that card to the battlefield under your control. It's a pretty good early game. Um, Plague Silver, it's a 5-5 five, five for 4. Pretty decent as well. There is uh, Empty the Warrens, which I found is a lot of fun in the green red decks with a lot of ramp. Um, let's see. Uh, Frisian Totem. I think I just take the Sin Collector though. It's between the Sin Collector and the Plague Sliver. And I'm not quite sure which one is better, but I'm going to take the Flyer. Um, hmm. So. Uh, Haste and Flanking is fine. Uh, it enters the battlefield 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, so it's a 3 3 for 5. Uh, you can remove a counter from it and pay 2 mana to put a counter on target creature, or you can make a uh, land into a creature. <laughs> Interesting. Um, As an additional cost, tap three untapped white creatures you control. So, not necessarily what we're looking for right now. I think we just want the Outrider Encore. The Encores are an interesting group of creatures in that they all have the ability to redirect damage onto other creatures you control, which is really nice if you happen to have creatures that are protected from a certain color. Uh, additionally, it's really hard to kill them. So, I'm gonna take it. Uh, here is a good example of a creature where you can use Outrider in Core's ability. Uh, flying and pro black. It has to spend three for uh, two, which is pretty good. Uh, Pentarch Ward is also <laughs> pretty nice with Outrider in Core's ability. Um, yeah, I think I just want the Dusk Rider Peregrine. I'm counting it as a 2-drop because there's a good chance that that is what I'll end up doing on turn 2. Um, our Soul Collector is a little awkward because its morph cost is triple black, so I, I'm guessing we won't be morphing it that often. Let's take a second. Dusk Rider Peregrine. That's fine. Um, hmm. Dark Withering. Destroy target non-black creature. I think it's reasonable. It's also got madness cost of one black. Uh, there are a couple of ways to discard cards in black and white. So, uh, there's a good chance that you can be casting it as, for one black only. Hmm. Yeah, I'll take that over the Shadow Mage Infiltrator. The kind of weird deck so far. <laughs> Not gonna lie to you. Interesting. <laughs> we have Uncle Istvan as a black creature. Uh, Ivory Giant is an interesting one in that. If you play a lot of white creatures, it's very good. If you don't, it's kind of bad. Uh, Nantuko Shaman is a good form of card advantage. I think I just want the Ivory Giant, though. 
Like I could take the mind stab. Uh, no. No. Yeah, I think I just take the Traitor's Clutch. I think I just want the knight. Wow. This card is extremely good in mono black. Goodness. Telekinetic Sliver seems good, I guess. Uh, fortifies in this set. I did not realize. Uh, I think I might have actually, but yeah. I'll take the Knight. If it would be destroyed, to regenerate it. Combos with Outrider and Court. They're also both Rebels, uh, which is relevant because there are uh, Amru Scouts in this set, <laughs> which search for Rebels. Although, again, kind of a little super awkward in the Soul Collector Dark Withering deck. So we'll see how that goes. Um, here I'm pretty happy just taking the Benelish Cavalry. Uh, it's a 2-2 two -two for 2 with flanking. Uh, what flanking does, I didn't... Well, I have two other creatures with flanking and I haven't explain, explained it. Whenever a creature without flanking blocks this creature, the blocking creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. And that's before damage is dealt. So, like, if an X1 blocks it, then it just dies. Hmm. I think, given all of my, uh, suspend cards, I kind of want this Empty the Warrens, although... Like Cyclopean Giants is probably the best pick. It's not great, but I actually kind of like Gaze of Justice now, given I have so many white creatures. I just need to pick up more like tiny ones. Hmm. No. I guess I can add that to the sideboard. Uh, Feebleness seems like a decent removal spell to me. Maybe I'm wrong because it, like, wheeled, but... So I got a really awkward deck going here. <laughs> like, I've got Gaze of Justice on one end, and Uncle Istvan on another. Like, he's really good with Outrider, though. So, we'll see. Interesting. I always thought Paradise Bloom was good, so. Shows how much I know about this format. Hmm. I think we just want the Amro Scout in this pack. Um, there's certainly a couple of reasonable blue cards. Uh, Draining Walk is fun. Drifting Clouds Gate is a great suspend card. Uh, Dirkwood Bailoth, also a good suspend card, but we've already got, like, the... Knight of the Holy Nimbus and the Outrider Encore. Yeah, I think it's reasonable. Hmm. Creatures of the Chosen Color without flying can't attack you. So I could take like Chromatic Star. Try to play these black cards. I could also take Dirkwood Bailoth as just a solid creature. Hmm. I think I actually want to do that. I think that's a fairly decent creature. Hmm. Rebel? No. Okay. <laughs> um. Let's see, Grave Shot is a decent removal spell. Fallen Ideal is kind of weird. Uh, it's good if you have a lot of random dorks, uh, like if you're playing the green-black um, fungus sapperling deck. I think Nantuko Shaman's probably the best card in here. Like, it's a reasonable sized creature, and it goes with my Dirkwood Bailoth. Just all of the suspend. This usually comes out on turn 5, but it says draw a card, which is pretty good. Um, hmm. Gauntlet of Power does not actually do what I want it to do in this format. Um, 
so I don't think I'm gonna take it. Uh, premature Burial is a great removal spell. Zealot Yelvec is fine too, but I think I just take the Premature Burial. Um, hmm. Merfolk is as a assassinate and merfolk. I think I just take the Pendark Ward. I don't think I play it, but Pendark Ward. Okay, so <laughs> this set is probably part of the reason why Wizards stopped printing protection. Um, if you look, protection, protection. Protection. This is a common. These are uncommons, but still pretty good. Gross. Um. I guess I take the Gorgon Recluse. It's a way to destroy black creatures, because this can't and this can't. I'm sure I'm still not sure about playing Uncle Istvan. Um, if I get one of the cre there's a creature that uh, you tap two and discard a card to put two citizen tokens into play. I would be extremely happy to have that one. Hmm. I think I take the Prismatic Lens. It's another form of mana fixing. Academy Ruins isn't... Well, this is a... <laughs> it is worth something. All slower creatures have thinking. It is worth something, but... This is a phantom event. Um... Put that over there. Take the chromatic star, I guess. Uh, Mana Skimmer is actually pretty neat. Uh, it's a 2 2 flyer for 4, and when it deals damage to a player, tap target land that player controls, and it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So it's an interesting aggressive creature. Um, here, I'm gonna take the Sidewinder Sliver. Gaze of Justice is something that I need to consider. So, the more white creatures I have at a lower cost, the better. It's a really weird deck. <laughs> I feel like we're gonna suffer from a lot of mana issues. Ah, uh, so many Dredge Reavers. I really don't want to play this card. The rate is not very good, let me tell you. Hey, double sidewinder sliver. Sweet. Hmm. I think we just want Gripping Guide. Uh, let's see. So Gripping Guide, uh, enchanted creature, enchanted creature gets plus two plus two and flying, and when it dies, put a two two white Gripping creature onto the battlefield. Seems pretty good. Uh, Pit Keeper is pretty good. It's a two mana Grave Digger if you have four creatures in your graveyard or more. So, Griffin Guide's pretty sweet. Hmm. Could take Trespass. Oh, wait, no. Sudden Death seems really good too. Castle Raptors. Yeah, I think I just take this. Sudden Death. Trespasser is a way to discard a card like Dark Withering, but I think I'll be fine. Uh, here. Strangling Suit. Seems pretty good. Take another Cavalry.
Nightshade Assassin is pretty sweet in a mono black deck, which this is definitely not. Amru Seekers, however, is just pretty sweet. It can't be blocked except for by artifact creatures and by white creatures, aka has Intimidate. So I'm feeling a little bit better about our mana base, uh, especially since we're not playing Uncle Istvan. That card can get out of there. Probably not playing Cyclopean Giant. Mm, probably not playing Paradise Plume either. Whew, Faceless Butcher. Faceless Butcher is sweet. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, exile target creature other than Faceless Butcher. When it leaves the battlefield, return exiled creature. So yeah, pretty neat. Every giant can probably go. Ooh, this is what I was talking about. Uh, discard a card, put two white 101 citizen tokens onto the battlefield. It's a really good way to discard things like Dark Weathering Arcor and Recluse. Hmm. Can't control target creature. This seems really good. Oh, you have to figure out a way to untap it. Interesting. I'm gonna take the corpulent corpse. Um, feebleness, I suppose. Mind stab? I don't know. I don't know what's going on anymore, you guys. Probably don't want to play these children. I mean, now that I have a Cadian Crier, I feel a little bit better about this case of justice. But this is a weird deck. I mean, splashing for removal doesn't seem that bad, I'm gonna be honest. And like, Corpulent Corpse uh, with its fear could be pretty good. It's a bit better as a top end than uh, Ivory Giant just because all of our top end is black. I'm gonna cut this skittering mon monstrosity. We do have a couple double black cards, which is, you know, great. Um, I'll take the rare. I will take a third side winder sliver. Does flanking stack? I feel like it should. Oh wow, flanking stacks. Uh, so should play all of these Sidewinder Slivers, because nobody's ever going to block them. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Fun fact, you guys. Flanking stacks. Um, foil Ignite Memories. Ignite Memories is a sweet card. Uh, it's just like too... Just, just random enough to be a great storm card. Target player reveals a card at random from his or her hand. Ignite Memories deals damage to that player equal to that card's converted mana cost. So you're not guaranteed to be able to ignite memories for anything because your opponent could just have lands in their hand. So interesting. For sure. <laughs> We're playing all of these Sidewinder Slivers because we have Gaze of Justice in our deck. <laughs> Alrighty, and I think playing 16 lands is appropriate in this deck. It's like low enough 
to the ground that we can justify it. Eight and eight. Kind of have to go down one. Like, I think that's fine though. We have chromatic star and prismatic lens, so we'll see how it goes. This deck is sweet. Look at all these, like, big things that we have to do. Soul Collector. Stuff like that. Like, Soul Collector can be cast as a morph and, like, not unmorphed ever. I can see that. Anyway, I'll see you guys in round one.